Welcome to Littles in Common. I'm Barbara McRae. And I'm Bob Spinozzi. The Friends of the COA's January luncheon was a great success. The theme was Chinese New Year. Ninety seniors were served a delicious meal from the restaurant Taka. I was tickled to see that, as requested, so many wore red, and that's a sign of good fortune. I got to wear a red jacket that I had for many years, and it has dragons embroidered on it. All in all, it was a great time to celebrate the beginning of 2020. In February, the theme is Mardi Gras. So purple, green, yellow, and lots of beads will be in all of the decorations. We will have Delta Blues Entertainment with Roger Ticknell. Tiny's Restaurant is catering the food, and this time it will be chilly. Have you been to Oh, Tiny's? sure, yeah. 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 How yeah. did you get Tiny's? Well, we were there having dinner, and uh, Sharon went up to the son and said, um, would you be willing to ta uh, cater a, a luncheon for us? Yeah. And he said, I'd love to. So yeah, we the, got them. It's such an innocuous, innocent name, Tiny's, but it's a really neat place. They have good, good food there. Oh, yeah. Especially it's, seafood. Yeah, and it's always crowded. We go on Wednesdays. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's when you get the seafood. Seafood, okay. Yeah, we love it. So sign up for this lunch by calling the COA office at 978-540-2470. I hope many of you enjoy our luncheons as much as we enjoy giving them. The Friends Board plans the year and its themes at their meetings uh, months before September and work is done by each member to take, make sure the lunches are a success. If you have any ideas for themes you should like to see, let any of our members know and we will try to satisfy that request. You know, a lack of drinking water in your diet can cause dehydration. This happened to one of our guests at this uh, luncheon we had and we had to call the paramedics. This is the second person to have this happen recently. I don't drink enough water, but this makes me reconsider. You wouldn't think it would happen in the winter when you aren't overheated, but it can. Yeah, dehydration can occur at any time. It happens when your body loses too much fluid. And this can happen when you stop drinking water or lose large amounts of fluid from perspiring or exercise. And it can occur, it can incur, can occur rather at any age. Now keep in mind that your body can have anywhere from 60 to 75 percent water content. So to help prevent dehydration, drink plenty of water, heat foods with high amounts of water like fruits and vegetables, and try to limit drinks with caffeine like coffee, tea, and soft drinks. Actually, I have my water today. So while we are on the subject of food, our senior diner could use some help. Do you have some suggestions concerning the diner? We have these lovely volunteers and kitchen and want to make sure it gets good use. Are you interested in volunteering there? Would you like a small tax break on your real estate property? Or maybe you are looking to help a good cause. You will be so welcomed with open arms by Gail Dalton, and she is looking for help on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Just a couple of hours would be great. Drop into the diner any day between 9 and 1 to talk to Gail. Your time is important to us, and so are our seniors. The senior diner is open for ladies' breakfast and men's breakfast each month. Bacon, eggs, sausages, pancakes, home fries, and toast are served. You can't beat that at $3. The dates are the ladies' breakfast is February 13th, the men's breakfast is February 19th, and both are from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. There's also a veteran's breakfast at the senior diner each month, and that's prepared by the Littleton Fire Department and Police Department. Veterans of all ages are invited, and it's free. So come on in February 26th this month and join us. Uh, speaking of veterans, there's a new veterans group gathering. Elder and Human Services is welcoming veterans of all ages to a new social club hosted by U.S. Air Force veteran Hal Arthur. They plan to meet the second Thursday of each month in room 233. First meeting will be on February 13th 
at 1 p.m. A lot of talk about food, and I'm getting hungry, but there is more. I want to mention the neighborhood suppers. I have not been yet, but I get such great reviews about how good they are. Every Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m., each church in Littleton takes a turn to prepare and serve the meal. It's a great connection with the churches, and the food is very good. Many go each week to socialize and enjoy what is served. The Congregational Church has the space to hold these dinners each week. This is free and open to all who would like to come. And I know my husband might want to go so he can get a good meal. There is more than eating going on at the COA. This month, the Crafts at the Council will be on Wednesday, February 5th. This is held at 1 p.m. in the Shattuck Street Multipurpose Room. The craft is note cards. The medias are stamps, stickers, cut paper, and sayings. It's early enough in the month to do Valentine's. The cost is $3, and as always, call the COA office to register. If you like the new rage of coloring books, there is a coloring coffee and conversation group that will meet Monday, February 3rd at 2 p.m. in room 233. There is no charge and coloring blanks and books are available, but you will need your own pencils and pens. And I've heard it's very relaxing. Loving Stitches is another very special group. If you need or crochet and want to do it with others, Check on this Monday gathering. It begins at noon, so bring your lunch. Then enjoy visiting and working on your items. These scarves, hats, and various things are donated to local charities. There is plenty of yarn to choose from, and needles are available. So come in and visit, because I guarantee you will want to come again. Now, on February 11th at 10 a.m., you can spend an evening with Eleanor Roosevelt when author and historian Carol Cohen will give us a look into the life of Eleanor Roosevelt. During the presentation, meet Eleanor Roosevelt at her home, learn about her role as a human rights activist, and inspect many primary sources that were very much a part of her personal and professional life. Cohen's presentation is both interesting and interactive, focusing on Eleanor after the death of Franklin when she is living on her own. This program is part portrayal and part presentation. Carol Cohen currently works at Lesley University and is a published historian and playwright. She owns an educational consulting company and is currently writing the book Life Lessons from Eleanor Roosevelt. And as I just, as I just mentioned there, uh, my goodness, she, uh, of course, was with her husband uh, between 1933 and 1945. And she was quite the activist. Uh, mm -hmm for um, civil rights and um, uh, just rights for, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. W women's rights, largely, actually. Yeah, you do hear a lot about her, uh, uh, you know, activities and how um, important they were to her. So this should be very interesting. Uh, it will be. Yeah. So, well, okay. we'll have to look into it. Always Good Entertainment is Indian Hill Music. Evan Thea, what's happening in February? Thank you, Bob. Well, February is just jam-packed with concerts and events over here at Indian Hill, and we know you'll just love them. Starts out with the Bluegrass Jam. And what's that? Well, that's a, it's a lively set of bluegrass music being played by award-winning guitarist Tony Watt and Grammy-nominated fiddler Laura Orsha. They'll come in on Friday, February 7th at 7.30 p.m. And you can listen to their concert and then bring your instrument and sit in and play with them. So it's a really, really interesting event, the Bluegrass Jam. Box Lunch Concert continues Thursday, February 13th. Two shows, one at 11 and one at 1.30 p.m. And this time, it's chamber music for winds and strings featuring Eileen Yarrison on flute, Bill Kirkley on clarinet, and a bunch more people. So again, that's Thursday, February 13th. You can find out more at 4869524 or online at indianhillmusic.org. We've got a Latin jazz concert on February 14th at 7.30 p.m. And that will feature the spectacular jazz pianist and vocalist Zahili Gonzalez Zamora and her band. Then we've got the barn dance. We did this uh, last spring and it was a big hit. So we're doing it again February 21st. It's a Friday night. 
the bar and dance, uh, traditional and country jigs and reels, and we've got professional caller Todd Whittlemore coming on to call the dances, and our traditional acoustic music ensemble will play the music. So again, that's Friday, February 21st. Orchestra of Indian Hill continues its season on Saturday, February 29th at 7.30 p.m. Bruce and the orchestra will be playing music connected to leap year, so you'll have to come to the concert and find out more about that. And it'll be Hanson Symphony No. 6, Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 4, and Bizet's Carmen Fantasy for Flute and Orchestra with guest flutist Marco Granado. So again, Saturday, February 29th. So find out about tickets and more information online, IndianHillMusic.org, and about lots more things you can do with us, including taking, less, taking lessons at our music school. So come on down. Thank you. I am excited about this, Bob, the ukulele lady on February 18th. Robin Sewell is the lady with the uke, and I have such good memories of my dad and his ukulele. In fact, I have that uke now and wish I could play it. I also have all of dad's music books with those very, very old songs. Robin rediscovered her love for singing while learning to play the ukulele six years ago. She can be found strumming away for family events or performing at various assisted living residences, senior centers, or town events, along with a circle of like-minded friends. Music tends to center around the 50s and surrounding decades. Audience participation is welcomed, and I can't wait. And that's on February 18th at 2 p.m. in room 233, and please sign up at the COA office. Thursday, February 27th at 1 p.m., there's a movie, The Peanut Butter Falcon, and it'll be shown in room 230 town offices. It's an adventure story starring Shia LaBeef, Zach Gottsagen, and Dakota Johnson. The setting is in a world of modern Mark Twain, and the story begins when Zach, a 22-year-old man with Down syndrome, runs away from the nursing home where he lives to chase his dream of becoming a professional wrestler. Now, along the way, he teams up with an outlaw on the run, and they both have an adventurous trip through the Delta. So sign up for the Peanut Butter Falcon at the COA office or call 978-540-2470. An adult hands-on workshop for pastel painting is scheduled February 26th at 1 p.m., with artist Gregory John Maycheck. The subject is Sail Away on the Craft of Pastel Painting. Imagine using sailboat references and Maycheck's pastel per version of Monet's Impressionist. Sailboat at Les Petites Genet Villiers to create your own pastel painting. In this new two-hour workshop, you will freely experiment with hundreds of the artist's professional-grade pastels, pastel pencils, and pastel paper, creating painting in your own style. This is a fun workshop which is designed for beginners to experienced artists. The cost is $5, but you call 978-540-2470 to sign up. You know, the weather has been crazy, and it makes what to wear a hard decision. The Friends Thrift Shop may have your answer. Come in and see what we have. We have heavy coats and lightweight jackets, wool and linen, jeans and dressy. The racks are full, and the selection is wide. Men's, women's, children's, large, small, and in between. Take your time and search. We are there to help. So stop in Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Donations are always welcome, be it clothing or financial assistance. Bill Vale's internet and computer classes for February are as follows. February 6th, ransomware. What is it? How to protect yourself from it. On February 13th, moving email systems, moving contacts address book, notifying people and websites. On February 20th, Digital Photography, Review of Concepts, Moving Pictures Off Your Phone. And then on February 27th, more Google services, 
creating forms, surveys, synchronizing data across systems. So stay with us now when Marilyn Fidel is my guest today with stories of her trips. My guest this month is Marilyn Fidel, and this is a person who has traveled all over the world. And she and her husband, Dick, uh, aren't letting the grass grow under their feet, that's for sure. Uh, they are on flights to any and all of the places that they want to see and experience. Thank you, Marilyn, for being here and sharing your stories with us today. You're very welcome. Um, I want to know how many countries have you traveled to so far? I'm saying so far because I know this is just before. I really couldn't tell you, but I've, got, I've traveled all over the U.S., Canada, never been to Mexico, have been to South America, all over Europe, Asia, Africa, been to China. The only continent we have not been on is Africa. Oh, I don't mean Africa, I mean um, Antarctica. Oh. Because <laughs> we've done several safaris in Africa. Oh my goodness. Um, so actually you're home just a little while and then you're taking off again. Usually it's only two large trips a year, but sometimes it they're close together and so it appears that I'm gone more. Mm -hmm. For example, this year we did this trip I'm talking about. We're leaving for Vietnam in the middle of February and then we'll be going to Nova Scotia in May for my granddaughter's college graduation. So it's a whole bunch close together, but that isn't normal. Is it good for you when you get home? Because I, I know I can travel for two weeks or something, and I'm so happy to get home and get into you know, there, my bed. And there's no place like home. It could be a shack, but it would be home. Mm -hmm. And there's no place, no bed as good as my bed. <laughs> but you're out of your bed a lot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you do tours or do you do this alone with your husband? Mostly we do tours, Barbara. And one of the reasons we've done mostly tours is some of the places we go are places that are very busy. All of the tourists want to go. So by going on a tour group, when you get there, you don't wait in line. You don't have to wait in line to buy tickets. You walk right in. That's one reason. Another is we don't travel with friends. We make friends all over. And we, we have traveled with friends that we've made on other trips by meeting them at another destination. Ah, okay. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you probably wouldn't meet people that go as much as you. And no. you do meet new people all the time. Yep. And that's a lot of fun to meet all these people. Yeah, I imagine. And we like the cultures. We do not go to shop. Most times we maybe bring home a candy bar or something like that. But we enjoy the culture of the different countries. Ah, huh, okay. Do you ever take off from your tour group? Or Yes, there is also free time. For example, this past summer when we traveled, we have friends that live 40 miles north of Stockholm. So we stayed and visited with them for four days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's good to have friends in other countries. Awesome. I know that yeah. because our last trip to Italy, we went from there to uh, Germany to visit friends. Mm -hmm. And they took us on a tour of their town they had just moved to. And uh, you know, it's great because you have someone who has the language, you have someone who knows what to show you, and it's not with a big group, it's just with friends, so. And the understand. tours that we've gone on, it's not big groups of people. Hmm. So, you know, you get to know the few people on your tour, mm -hmm. and then you have free time. Maybe you're gonna go off with one couple or go by yourself and do things like that, because you do get a lot of free time. What about the food? I mean, you're changing to a lot of different foods on these. I will try whatever they're, feeding us no matter where I go. If I don't like it, well, I just have to eat a little bit. I don't have to clean my plate, but I will try whatever there is. Hmm. Yeah. Is there any time where you didn't like what you were eating? When we were in, you know what, I, was it China maybe? I can't remember exactly. I tried tarantula and it was awful. But I had a napkin in my hand, 
so I could very nicely wipe my mouth and put the tarantula in the <laughs> napkin. <laughs> well, good. You learn all kinds of tricks then. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was going to ask you um, if there were any repeats to countries, but I, I'm assuming there are. But which ones would you re like repeating? My favorite... I did a lot of corporate travel as well when I was, and that's what whet my appetite to do more travel. Okay. Because corporate, you don't see anything. Mm. My very favorite country to visit would be Singapore. I've only been there for work. I would love to go back. But you can see the whole island in two days, maybe three at the most. Uh -huh. um, in Europe, I love Germany. Germany is my favorite country. Yeah. Um, but I don't have one I don't like. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I went to Italy the first time, and I'm, my mother's side of the family is Italian, I felt such a relationship to everybody. I looked around and said, these are all my cousins. It just feels so good. Did you have that feeling? No. Huh. Because Never? I'm an only child, okay? And my mother had a very small family and my father died before I was born. So as a result, I'm a little family, so I never had that feeling anywhere. But everywhere I've traveled, people have been so friendly yeah. that, you know, and we always, every country I've been in, we have had either dinner or a cafe clutch in a native's home. Oh, nice. And that's where you really learn the culture of that country. Yeah. I just thought maybe, whatever background your parents are, that you would feel that. In English? And yeah, I love England. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right, let's see. I was asking if you had a favorite, and you already told me that. That's Singapore. And, uh, you know, you were on a trip recently was the, a cruise, right? It was the first two weeks in November, we were on a river cruise down the Nine, the Rhine. And we started out by going into Brussels, into Belgium to Brussels and Bruges. And then we drove to Amsterdam and boarded the ship to go down the Rhine. Uh -huh. To visit all of the Chris Kindle markets. Uh -huh. We visited five in Belgium and we went to eight in Germany. And by then we were Chris Kindle marketed out. <laughs> well, good. Mm. So, um, next trip. We are, if all goes well, depending upon this coronavirus, we are supposed to leave on the 17th of February for Vietnam for three and a half weeks. We're supposed to fly into Hanoi and then go further up north into the hill country and then go down. We'll have a couple of day cruise on the Mekong River and go down the Delta and end up in um, Ho Chi Minh City, hmm. which is the former Saigon. Hmm. This isn't the first time for you there. I've been to Saigon before, but that was all I saw of Vietnam, and it is beautiful. That's what I hear, and a lot of people uh, have gone and said it is a beautiful country and they would go back. Yep. Well, it's probably... The traffic is unbelievable. I have never seen, and it's not with automobiles, it's with Vespas, or the small. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they put the whole family on one little Vespa. Yep. They carry their couches on one little Vespa, <laughs> which we... Well, uh, the same in Italy, they are motorcycles, and they're yeah. all over the place, and that's the big thing, you know, and they do travel with the kids between the legs or the, you know, umbrella or whatever. Oh, it's unreal. In the Netherlands, it's bicycles. And they have their briefcases and their umbrellas, and I don't know yeah, how they manage that's it. That's Germany, too. And um, that part, I kind of envy. Um, I guess our roads and all aren't likened to, you know, a lot of bicycle, a lot of Vespos right. uh, traveling. I think we're trying to work towards that, but um, it's not that way here at all. People won't give up their automobiles. Well, yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they like them big here. Yes. And they're getting bigger. So yeah. I c that I can understand. Mm. Um, so if after Vietnam, what do you think you'd like to do? I don't really have any other plans other than 
my granddaughter's college graduation. Mm -hmm. I, don't I love Nova Scotia, too. Oh, I do, too. Well, we're, that's where we're going to be for her college graduation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what but I But after that, we don't have anything right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, do you, I'm going to ask you this because you travel so much. Do you get some kind of points or something yes. for going that much? Of course, I get airline miles. Of course. Of course. Um, and depending on where I've traveled, I have traveled so many with the Grand Circle family that the more you travel, you know, you get more points. Mm -hmm. And it's equal to dollars towards your next trip. Hmm. So we do. So it is worth it. Uh, if you have the time, if you retire, retired, if you... Well, they're 55 plus. Grand Circle family of, is for 55 plus. It's not for the younger people. Oh. So it's really dedicated for us. Mm. Mm. But they don't allow walkers. They don't allow wheelchairs. Okay, I wondered. No, but you can have canes. But there are places that they tell you in their ads, you know, in their book, booklets, wheelchairs are not allowed, this isn't allowed, canes are okay, but you need to have someone with you to help you. And, but there are others that you're not going to run into that. Yeah, yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, okay, you're in another country and you don't feel well. What do you do about that? Oh, well, Dick ended up in the hospital in Iceland. We taught, you know, because you have, we're traveling with a tour, I talked to the program director and he says, I'll take care of it. You don't speak Icelandic, but I do. So he talked to Dick and he took him to the hospital. And because they, it was in the, they would only allow one person, he told me he would go and he would keep me informed and that I would go on with the rest of the people. And I said, oh, but I don't want to leave. He said, I'll keep in touch. And he, and then after we had gone to a home, what they call a home hosted dinner, was dinner in someone's home. Right. And after that, they stopped off and let me run into the hospital <laughs> and the bus waited for me to come back to the hotel. Oh, that's nice. So they do take care of wow, things they like do. that. Yeah. yeah. And on board ship one trip, he got an awful, awful cold. So he stayed in the infirmary and because he'd gotten the cold and all, he became dehydrated. So on board ship, they gave him the saline intravenous and kept him on the ship in the infirmary. <laughs> so there is yeah. medical available. That one is like water, water everywhere and not a, a drop, drop to, to drink. drink. <laughs> 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 well, and then you still go on other trips. So I yes. guess you really have had good care We've, or you would not want to do that's this. That's right. I wouldn't want to leave, you know, if I yeah. didn't. Think. And, and that's another reason why I like a tour group rather than going to an unusual place that I've never been, that I don't speak the language and I wouldn't know where to go or what to yeah, do. Yeah, I think tours are, we, we don't use one now because uh, where we're going, we know what to do and everything. Yeah. But on one of our trips, we had a friend have a heart attack and he ended up in the hospital and he ended up there uh, a while. His wife had to stay behind after we were all leaving to come back to the States yeah. and her sister stayed with her. He ended up passing away there and she had to hire a medical plane to take him back here, you know. Um, but <clears throat> it was all taken care of very well and it's always wise to get the insurance. I always get the insurance because I'm not 20 or 30 anymore. Always get the insurance. I always get the insurance because yeah. you just don't know. Well, it doesn't matter if you're 20 or 30. You could yeah. have. I had another friend who went, I think, to Paris or something, and um, you could the break day, the day there. She broke her ankle. I was just gonna say you could break a leg stepping off a curb. She did. That's exactly what happened, yeah. and so she needed to come back. Yeah. But she was taken care of very well. So, yeah, a tour for someone probably is the best thing to do. And um, unless, like I say, they've been to that country a lot yeah. and they know people and they uh, know what to do. Yeah. So, yeah. And making sure uh, when you go on these tours that, like you said, they take care of, you know they are going to take care of right. you. Right. Which is one reason we do. But when I was working, I mean, I, there are times now when I go to a country, oh, I think I'll call, like when 
We were in Amsterdam, not this time, but the last time it was only a stop. I called a friend who lives in Arnhem, which is just outside, and said, hi, Hans, how are you doing? So, you know, I do have acquaintances from yeah, that. Yeah. And one of the other trips to Germany, we spent two days with a friend in Berlin and another one in a, with a friend that lives north of Hanover. So we do have friends, places to go visit. Yeah, yeah. And you make them along the way if you travel a lot to That's right. So, yeah. And so, if you want to be a piece of the fabric of the country. And, right. you know, you, which yeah. is why I'll try eating anything. That's why we Good. rode an elephant on an elephant safari for four hours when we were in Africa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, good. How long do you think you'll be going on these trips? Probably not more than another couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Yep. How many years have you been doing it? About 25. See? Yeah. You know. So you are used to it and you get your suitcase. You, is your suitcase packed already? I mean, you must have one sitting at home. Just pick it up and we're going. I always, when I come home, and this is from when I was working, you know, the little bag that carries the toothbrush, the toothpaste, I clean that out and it's always filled and put back in the suitcase. You know, there's an umbrella that always stays in the suitcase. Yep. And we have, we each have a pair of walking sticks, which we were forced to buy at Machu Picchu. So we keep those in the suitcase because we never know when we might need them. Are they they're retractable? Fold, they or? fold up to about two oh. feet long. They fit right in the oh, suitcase. Okay. Then, because we knew we were going to Vietnam, and it's hot country, it's gonna be 80 and 90 degrees. Instead of putting all the summer clothes away, the things I thought I would take, I left out on the spare bed. So, but there's more than I will ever take. So I just have to now say, okay, which am I taking? And that's how I use How long them. will you be going there for? Little over, about, little, counting all the travel time and stuff, it's about three and a half weeks. We'll be in Vietnam for 21 days. For wow. three, yeah. Long time. It's a long well, time. Anything else you want them to know that it's important, especially if anyone wants to go? If you want to, if anyone wants to travel anywhere, they can always get a hold of me. I can give them the good points and maybe any negatives. Good. Well, because no matter where you go, there's Good There's then. always negatives. I mean, you can go to Acton and you're going to find the same thing. So yeah. it's not just foreign travel that's going to do it. It's anywhere you go. Yeah. And since you've been all over the country and the, people, and the countries, yeah, heroin is a good, good oh, piece of advice. Yeah. To you could call me anytime and I'd be more than happy to help you. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, I appreciate it. I yeah. enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, I still want to travel, but I don't want to go for four weeks. Or <laughs> I, miss, I miss my dog too much. I don't have any pets. <laughs> when I was in Singapore, Dick, this was way back when I was working, Dick had to put our cat down, and he has never let me have a pet since then, oh. unless I decide I will never travel again. I will stay home all the time oh. to take care of this animal. Okay. <laughs> well, you get a good sitter too sometimes. Yeah. which we try to do. But, yeah, uh, I enjoy going. Um, but I basically am kind of a But I like homebody. to come home. Yeah. I yeah. love to come home. And Probably feels even better. It does. Because you travel so much. Well, maybe after Vietnam, you'll have to come back and talk to us and tell us all about I'll that trip. Tell you all about Vietnam? I can do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah my husband said, obviously, they haven't been there during the war. <laughs> so that's why it's so beautiful now. No. But we talked to people when we were in Ho Chi Minh City that had lived through the war. Okay. When we were in Croatia, we were in a home where they had lived through the war in Croatia. Okay. And the bullet holes were still in the house. Mm. So we've, you know. Heard it. We've heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, by the way, Marilyn also works in our thrift shop. So yes. if you want to see Marilyn, you can drop into the thrift shop and look around first. Yes. <laughs> and then... Uh, Spend stuff. your money in the thrift shop. Yeah, yeah. I will gladly take your money. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. So uh, anyway, again, thank you, thank you, you for coming. You are very welcome. And I'll be seeing you for sure. Of course you will. Yes. The Council on Aging and Senior Diner, Senior Diner will be closed President's Day Monday, February 17th. Don't forget your Valentine on Friday, February 14th. And don't forget to hug a senior and your Valentine.